Hi folks, one of my absolute favorite things in life is figuring out Fusion 360 cam toolpaths. And we had our first hands-on milling class uh, last week that we were relaunching after COVID. And one of the students actually had a lathe turning question. And the question had to do with pipes that look like this, where the pipe has already been manufactured, but what they're doing is building this interior surface up where they're welding it and they needed a cam toolpath that they could control to turn down just this welded section. So I want to show two different ways to do this. The first has to do with sort of a fake cam operation. It's pretty quick and I actually really like it as a workflow. The second has to do with using a projecting revolve to create a dedicated stock component. Definitely takes a little bit more work but has some really cool parametric features that help tie in the CAD and the CAM side of things, which I think could be worth it if you want this level of control. To create the CAD model of the actual pipe, we just created a single sketch with some radiuses and fillets. And what we do is we revolve that feature around our x-axis origin, and that creates a pretty complicated pipe all in one sketch dimension. So let's start from scratch, assuming that you're new to Fusion 360 turning. So if we hop into the manufacturer workspace, first I'm going to create a new setup. I'll say turning or mill turn, the axis of rotation, and the body's already correctly selected. We'll click OK. I'm going to call this the fake cam up. And we'll create a turning profile roughing. And I've got a boring bar already, already selected. And actually, if we just click OK, we'll probably get a pretty decent start to a toolpath. Obviously, it would need some work, but I like creating a toolpath because then it's easy to go back in and edit it, make one change, maybe two. But if you're new, really just one at a time and, and watch what that change does. What I definitely know is I don't like the fact that I can't see my toolpath. So let's add a section view analysis. Go up to inspect section analysis, and I'll pick the plane. That's the plane here between the red and the blue. And that only changes the visibility of what I'm seeing on the screen by cutting this part in half. And it's really nice for turning work, especially ID turning work, because it lets me see this whole toolpath. So again, the idea is this customer is building up some of these surfaces with some sort of a welding technique, and they just want to turn it back down, and they don't want to do all this air cutting and so forth. So here's the simple, quick hack way to do it. We're going to take this first cam operation and we're going to under passes say stock to leave of 0.1 inches for both X and Z. And you'll notice what that does is it means the toolpath doesn't come all the way up to the part. This is going to be do not post dummy operation. I can now right click, duplicate that toolpath, and on this next toolpath, we will change under the geometry tab rest machining from previous operation and turn off stock to leave. Click OK. And that toolpath only cuts 0.1 inches relative to the internal features because it's a rest machining uh, operation. Rest actually stands for remaining stock, but the prior operation that Fusion did thinks it machined everything away except for 0.1 inches. So as long as your weldment or whatever you're building up that surface by is 0.1 inches or less, this second operation is kind of exactly what you want. If we want to then do a finishing ID toolpath, we can right click, create derived operation, turning, turning profile finishing. Oh, stock leaves already off. We probably don't need rest machine because it's a finish operation. And we can simulate that. The advantage to this technique, it's super quick. And you actually do have some control by changing that remaining stock amount or stock to leave amount of how much you want the actual cutting operation to cut. I would also recommend creating a setup NC program. We'll pick our post processor and under that, we'll pick the operations that we want. Actually, you need to rename that. Do not post one here to the roughing, weldment, and then the finishing. Because the key part to this is you don't ever want to post that first one. So by having an NC program that does not check the dummy operation uh, should mitigate the risk that you accidentally were to post that. So now let's hop back into the design workspace and we'll show the method of creating a CAD model of the solid stock. Right click on pipe, 
choose copy. And then on the parent component, so at the top of the CAD tree, right click and you wanna choose paste new. The difference between these two is that paste new pastes it as a totally separate new component. So any changes that we make to this new one that we're gonna call stock aren't applied to pipe. You would wanna choose paste instead of paste new if you wanted any changes you made to flow through to all copies or instances of that model. So we've got the stock component activated. I wanna do a project command and it's going to be easier to do that project if I have a cutaway of this profile. Modify split body. I'm gonna split this body using the same face we used earlier for our analysis, section analysis. It separates my stock component into two separate bodies, the left half and the right half. Really I need to see this half for now. Keyboard shortcut P for project. It's now asking me to select a plane. I'll click on this face right here. And for this example, to kind of show the power and control we have over it, instead of projecting the whole area, I'm actually just gonna project a section of it. So click on this, this, this. We'll go back a little further. Click OK. Sometimes I like to turn off my body so I can see what I just created. S to bring up the shortcut window. OFF for offset. I'll choose this second offset option. And if I click on that, I now have the ability to offset this line. But time out, I'm actually gonna hit cancel. So I think one of the cool things about this is going to make this even more parametric. Just finish my sketch for now and expand the modify command. Go down to change parameters. I'm gonna add a user parameter called weld build up. We'll make that weld build up 0.03 inches. Click OK. Now I'll go down to the bottom of my screen, right click that sketch one, edit it. And now I can do the exact same thing. S to bring up the shortcut window, OFF to find the offset function, click that line. And then instead of typing in a dimension, if I hit the W key, that user parameter we just created auto populates. Click OK. Hit L on your keyboard to sketch a line. We need to join the two ends. I'll turn my body back on and you can now see we've got a sliver of area that represents where I'm saying this weld area is getting built up. S on your keyboard for the shortcut window, REV for revolve, and we will revolve that section around our axis and click OK, except one thing I didn't like about that is that revolve command made it all part of body one. I actually want that revolved stock to be a new body, but luckily we can fix that. Go down to the bottom, the revolve, edit, and change it from a join to a new body. And just for the sake of this example, A on your keyboard, I picked a bronze. I can hover that over there. And so now you can kind of see that bronze represents the added up stock area relative to the part itself. Hop back into the manufacturer workspace. Create a new setup. Same turning. Settings, model, we'll pick the model itself. And under stock, we're gonna choose from solid. Now we could pick our bronze part here, but I would urge caution. I often like to go into the CAD tree on the left side of your screen, expand the stock, and be very deliberate to pick the body that I want. One thing that can help is to label that. So if we hop back into the design workspace, instead of calling it body three, I can actually call it weld stock. So our new setup, we'll call it revolved weld stock, is using that body only as the stock. I'm going to create a new roughing operation, and I am going to change the heights. Right now, the outermost area that it Fusion thinks it can do work is the stock OD, which is this lighter blue line, and the inner radius is the stock ID and this darker blue line. That's actually kind of close to what we want, but not close enough. It's still gonna do a fair amount of air cutting. If we click OK, you'll see it spends this time cutting here uh, in this particular example, but it could be far worse depending on your part geometry. And it's just not what we want. To better show that as an example, basically we don't wanna be using these radii or heights if you're used to the milling side of fusion to control our tool path. So I'm gonna actually set them to model OD and the inner radius just as a dimension one. 
And when, now we get the toolpath that we kind of expected, which is everywhere. What's awesome is if we re-edit that toolpath under geometry, check rest machining, the source should be from setup stock and click OK. Time out. I practiced this offline, but I was getting an empty toolpath warning that basically meant this operation wasn't working. And I figured out the reason is Fusion doesn't like this undercut right here. So if we hop back into our sketch and instead of having this sort of, again, undercut, instead we project this last piece and we make sure that this is perpendicular or even tipped forward a little bit. Regenerate and we get the exact toolpath we're looking for, which is limiting it to the area that we have that CAD stock sketched up. So as always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.